German Shepherds and Belgian Malinois, two breeds often compared to one another for various reasons. Today, however, we are not going to evaluate their similarities but also explore some of the differences in the breeds. Their histories, temperaments, and pretty much everything right down to their favorite dog food brand. <laughs> Maybe. But first, for more comparisons like this in the future, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Let's begin. The German Shepherd obviously hails from Germany. Emerging in 1899 as the German people looked to standardize the breeding of dogs, forming the Phylax Society to this end. They endeavored to breed dogs with specific traits for specific jobs such as herding sheep. The traits that they therefore induced into the dogs vary per requirement, but in the case of breeding a dog for the purpose of herding cattle, the resulting traits were intelligence, strength, and a strong sense of smell. This makeup, of course, endeared the breed to work in many fields, not just the farm. The German Shepherd was made official by Max von Stefanitz, an ex-cavalry captain. He was presented a dog named Hector, a product of intensive selective breeding. When Max purchased the dog, he immediately formed the Society for the German Shepherd Dog. It was shortly after this that the dog breed began to gain popularity in the country and then later the wider world. However, it wasn't long before stock and German Shepherds hit an all-time low. This was due to one famous proponent of the Shepherd, a famous owner of several such dogs, a man named Adolf Hitler, who at the time was known for his numerous paintings of German Shepherds and for usually having one by his side on countryside retreats. Of course, Hitler was also one of history's worst monsters and therefore didn't do much for the dog's popularity, but hey, you can't blame German Shepherds for that. It's actually because of Hitler that the German Shepherd is also commonly referred to as an Alatian. This is due to a renaming campaign in the United States during and after the Second World War, as the country wanted to distance themselves and the dogs they were using in the military and the police from the German enemy as much as possible. The Belgian Malinois also unsurprisingly hails from Belgium. They were also bred in a similar manner for the purpose of herding sheep and other cattle. They originated in the late 1800s and were also part of a group of dogs known as the Belgian Shepherds. Once again, due to the traits of herding cattle being so desirable for every working dog, the Belgian Malinois was quickly adapted into working for the military and police. In terms of looks, both Belgian Malinois and German Shepherds are stunning. They're famous for their looks of looking agile yet also strong. The breeds are very similar in their makeup with many people confusing the lesser-known Malinois for a German Shepherd, thinking the breed is just a younger or smaller Shepherd with a lighter blonde coat. The Malinois, however, is a lot sleeker in its build. Females average about 40 to 60 pounds, while males are about 60 to 80 pounds. All of this results in a nearly tireless breed. The German Shepherd, on the other hand, is about 10% larger than a Malinois, as females are 50 to 70 pounds and males are 65 to 90. However, although the German Shepherd carries more weight, the Malinois actually averages as a bit taller between the two. This is only a difference of one centimeter though, so it's not too big. Also, the German Shepherd has a slightly longer coat than a Malinois, with a thicker and fluffier undercoat. In short, in the gym of dog breeds, the Belgian Malinois is the CrossFit athlete and the German Shepherd is the powerlifter. German Shepherds also vary from the Malinois in coat coloring. The classic look for a shepherd is black and tan, however, these colors can differ and change over time from dog to dog. And due to these differences in appearance and coats, the grooming regimes of the two breeds are very different. First of all, due to the German Shepherd's double layer of fur, they can be quite hard to bathe as the outer layer is water repellent. This outer layer also sheds seasonally in the fall and winter months. Also, just like most dogs, both of them do require weekly grooming in order to keep their coats tidy. The Malinois does, however, shed more on the whole, and because the breed has deeper ears, they need to be examined regularly for wax buildup as well as mites and other debris that could make its way down there. This brings us to the health of the two breeds. I know it's not a nice thing to think about, but it is something to consider if you're pondering which dog to bring into your home. The two dogs have a very different lifespan. The increased size of a German Shepherd means their lifespan is between 10 to 12 years, compared to the 12 to 14 that you can expect a Malinois to live for. Throughout these lifespans, both dog breeds will be prone to suffer from hip and elbow dysplasia. 
The German Shepherds as a breed are more susceptible to develop allergies and diabetes as they grow older. Belgian Malinois are more likely to develop diabetes and cancer in their later years. Now let's talk about their temperament. As expected from dogs who were bred for work, they are both very smart and always willing to participate. In fact, these dogs take so well to training that the very first seeing eye dog was a German Shepherd named Buddy back in 1908. Their size and intelligence can be a lot to handle for first timers. Another benefit of being bred to herd stock is that both breeds possess a keen awareness of their surroundings and are vigilant at all times. All of this makes both German Shepherds and Belgian Malinois perfect canine units or guard dogs. In fact, it is recorded that as early as 1908, two Belgian sheepdogs were imported into the United States to work as police dogs. All of this, therefore, results in a breed of dog which simply cannot be kept in a back garden from dawn to dusk, day in, day out. These breeds are built to work, built for arduous exercise, and that is what they crave. Due to this working spirit, Belgian Malinois and German Shepherds get along with other dogs just as well as they have been socialized to do. Neither shows more aggression than the other. Essentially, when they are properly socialized, there's no reason to worry. From all of this, you would therefore assume that, in terms of temperament, the breeds are pretty much identical, but this isn't true on the whole. For example, the Belgian Malinois are notoriously difficult to tire out, being a much more slim and efficient build, which results in a dog that is tirelessly searching for stimulation. If not exercised properly, they can be found ripping apart a sofa or digging a miniature trench in the back garden. The Malinois is also notorious for barking. They are known to bark and howl to express emotions and are therefore liable to bark a lot without proper, lengthy training. A German Shepherd, however, is a very quiet breed with a lower barking tendency. In exchange, they are known for its high prey drive. In other words, do not own or buy a Belgian Malinois or a German Shepherd if you have a cat. These dogs are not cat friendly, so please just don't. German Shepherds, on the other hand, are much easier to tire in comparison. That means this breed can live happily on decent levels of exercise when accompanied by lots of interactions. In other words, a lot of play with their owners. These lower activity levels also mean that German Shepherds are much more adaptable. Being able to adjust to living situations such as apartments or even houses without gardens much easier than a Belgian Malinois. This makes them also a lot more family and kid friendly. However, Malinois are by no means bad to have in a family setting. The only problem is that this breed is known to be very protective or quick to jealousy, which can result in Malinois acting out. To give a quick comparison in a family setting, a Malinois is a breed that craves action, a goal to achieve, while a German Shepherd craves attention from within the family circle. A prospective dog owner who is looking for a warm and affectionate family pet who loves both running and lounging and doesn't mind a toddler hanging on its side for hours should look into adopting a German Shepherd. On the other hand, if you're looking for a dog that can keep up with a very active lifestyle and enjoys various tasks and challenges without necessarily needing its owner to spend hours with them, then the Belgian Malinois is for you. The German Shepherd is very popular, more so than the Malinois, however the gap between the two is lessening each year. The AKC registration touts the German Shepherd to be the second most popular breed in the world. Malinois is only at 43. However, this is a staggering improvement over the past couple of years. Due to this lower popularity level, there are less Malinois being bred today than many other dogs. This means that for the few who have their heart set on the breed, there may be extra difficulties in securing their right for them. If you're wondering why the Malinois has grown in popularity, that can be linked to many things. You could even say that since the breed has overtaken the Shepherd as the dog of choice for military and police, the breed's popularity has been on the incline. After all, Belgian Malinois were the breed that SEAL Team 6 brought into Pakistan in that successful mission of eliminating Osama bin Laden. This spike in popularity then resulted in a knock-on effect, which showed the dogs popping up more and more on social media and TV. In the end, I think it's fair to say that while the two dogs are very similar, they differ enough to require two very different owners who have different expectations from their pets. It's also safe to say that whichever of these fine friends you pick, they will be a friend for life and a welcome addition to yours. If you have any other cool or unique facts about German Shepherds or Belgian Malinois, feel free to drop a comment below or maybe share your own experience with these breeds. Also, for more information on dog breeds in the future, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.